Hi Year 9, here is your third lesson on an inspector calls. So we're going to revise the word privilege. So which family is presented as not being privileged in a Christmas carol? So think back to term one, think back to the work we did on a Christmas carol, particularly your assessment. What's the name of the family in a Christmas carol that are presented as not being privileged? And our new word today is an aristocrat. OK, so an aristocrat is a member of the upper class, which is the highest class in society. Um, you would either be born into an aristocratic family or you could um, become an aristocrat through marriage. So you could marry a member of the aristocracy. Um, they had a lot of wealth. They would have a title like Lord or Lady or Duke, Duchess. They could often trace their families back um, generations. They'd have the big, you know, fancy house as well, the estates. Um, it's this idea of inherited titles and inherited wealth. So, looking at our new question then, what social class do aristocrats belong in? Now, I've sort of given you the answer to that question already by looking at the definition, but obviously we're doing things a little bit in a different way as we're not doing these videos live. So your want to aim higher question is what privileges would aristocrats have from their birth? So if you were born an aristocrat, what privileges do you think you would have? So you can pause the video and answer those questions. So the Cratchit family, are the poor family in A Christmas Carol who are presented as not being privileged and you would have done an assessment on them back in term one. And remember, I keep talking about A Christmas Carol because it's one of the set literature texts that we're going to be studying next year as well as in Inspector Calls. So aristocrats obviously belong to the upper classes. We're going to be focusing on class in this lesson today. So what privileges would aristocrats have from their birth? Well, obviously they would have um, wealth They'd have that financial security. They would have an excellent education. Um, they would be very well brought up in terms of their manners. They would have lots of connections in society. They would have lots of support. Basically, life was pretty fantastic if you were an aristocrat. So our knowledge goal today is to explain what you have learned about the class system in 1912. So we're going to watch a couple of video clips today and we're going to develop our understanding of social class and the class system, particularly what it was like in 1912. So by the end of the lesson, you'll know some more detailed information about the class system in 1912 and how this links to the opening stage directions that we read um, in yesterday's lesson. So I'm not going to play these clips live because it didn't work out too well the last time I tried to do that as there was no sound in the first video. So if you look at the comments um, on the YouTube video or if you go back to your original email from your class teacher, you will see the links to the two YouTube clips. Now, the first one is a very short clip. It's about a minute and a half from um, The Three Ronnies, which is an old um, comedy show. And that's just there really to sort of show you the stereotypes of the lower class, the middle class and the upper class. The second video is the one that's got your um, proper information. So what I advise you do is when you watch the second clip, they talk about each of the classes one at a time. I would pause it, make some notes on what they say about, say, the working class and then unpause it and then look at the middle class and then the upper class because as always with these videos, they move quite quickly, okay? So you need to pause this video now, go over, look at the comments, get those YouTube videos up, watch those YouTube videos, particularly the second one, and make notes on what you learn about the working class, the middle class and the upper class. It's going to tell you what sorts of jobs were in those different classes, they're going to talk to you about what it was like to be a member of those class, what your life was like. Okay, these are some notes that I need to see you making. Okay, so you can pause the video now and get that done. So just to help consolidate your understanding, really, and you may well in your exercise books want to copy this slide out. 
Now, when we talk about social class, we often talk about climbing the social ladder. And climbing the social ladder is something Mr. and Mrs. Burling are desperate to do. And we're going to start reading the play next week. And I'm sure you picked this out about their characters. So at the top of your ladder, you have the aristocracy. We know that you can only be born into the class or marry into the class, that it involves royalty, dukes, lords, or those that receive a knighthood. Now, a knighthood would have to be something, um, someone that the queen selected for a particular honour, okay, and you become a sir. Below them, then, you have the upper middle class. So these would be factory or big business owners or jobs like bankers, doctors, lawyers. Now, what's interesting, as you would have learned in the video, is that the upper middle class could sometimes be as wealthy, have as much money as the aristocracy. But what they did not have was the status. What they did not have was the title. So if we look then at factory big business owner, we know then that the Burling family are upper middle class. What they are not is aristocracy. Mrs Burling potentially, because she's her husband's social superior, was a member of the aristocracy, but Priestley leaves that a little bit vague. So we know that the Bur Mr. Mrs. Burling, Sheila, Eric are upper middle class, okay, because Mr. Burling is a factory owner. The lower middle class then, going further down the ladder, were your skilled workers or labourers. So like a blacksmith, for example, a lay someone who worked, a labourer, but they you needed to have a certain level of skill or training. Um, shopkeepers. So someone that owned a small bakery, for example. Um, Civil servants like teachers, policemen. So Inspector Gould, when we meet him, is a, would be a lower middle class man. So his status is lower than the Burling family. So then you have the working class. They're at the bottom of the ladder, but not quite the very bottom. They're your factory workers. So the sorts of people that would work in Mr. Burling's factory. Unskilled laborers. So, you know, you could get anyone off the street to do it. Um, they were people who worked in the mines, um, coal mines, for example, and also shop employees. OK, so your working class were this idea of being unskilled. Everyone, anyone could do it. Then you at the very bottom of the ladder, you have the poor. 